Hey guys, it's Nicole from PrairieRootsHomeschool.com and today I'm going to be sharing our moon unit study with you guys. So lately, my children have been obsessed with the moon and space, so I thought this would be a really great opportunity to nurture that interest and develop a love for learning centered around the moon. So today I'm going to be sharing all the books that we read, the activities that we did, and all of the other wonderful resources that we used for our moon unit study. And I should also mention that my children are in preschool and kindergarten, so this unit is centered around those ages. And as usual, I'll try to link as much as I can down below in the description box for you guys. So there you will find all of the books, links for printables and instructions and so much more. So definitely be sure to check that out. All right, let's just go ahead and dive right in. We kicked off our moon unit with the celebration of the Chinese Moon Festival also known as Mid-Autumn Festival. This was a great way to not only show appreciation for the moon and God's creation, but to also immerse our children in Chinese culture. This was important to us as our children do have some Chinese roots. We came together to celebrate the unity of our family, observe the moon, and we even tasted some traditional Chinese mooncakes, which the kids weren't actually big fans of, but nevertheless, it was still an experience. We also read the book Mooncakes by Loretta Seto and illustrated by Rene Benoit. And this was a great read for introducing the Moon Festival and its mythological history. And it also brought up some good discussions of how people have different belief systems. This book is filled with such colorful and lively illustrations and is really a great pick if you're teaching your children about the Chinese Moon Festival. I'm sure most of us are familiar with this next book. Good Night Moon is such a classic. It's a really sweet and simple bedtime book that's filled with rhyming. It's also pretty repetitive, so it's great for language development if you have really little ones. And personally, I think this book just gets better and better every single time you read it. And the images are just so engaging for little ones. To go along with our read aloud, I went ahead and grabbed a free Goodnight Moon rhyming pack from the website Life Overseas. Now I decided to turn this printable into a file folder game for my children. So I went ahead and printed off and laminated all of the different pieces. And the goal of the game is to match each image with its rhyming pair. So you have Kitten Mitten, Chair Bear, Balloon Moon. Sock Clock, and Brush Mush. And if you're wondering how I got these images to secure to one another, I just used these Velcro dots. And then I used double-sided tape to secure the images and the envelope to the folder. Next we have another free printable, and this one is from ABCs to ACTs. And this is just a simple matching game, which is great for working on visual discrimination with toddlers and preschoolers. To make this activity a little more challenging for my kindergartner, I went ahead and laminated the cards with a black sheet of paper behind them in order to turn this into a fun memory game. Memory games are so beneficial for developing brains. They can help improve concentration and focus, as well as critical thinking. And not only do they improve short-term memory, but they also can help improve a person's long-term memory as well. These type of games also just help provide a fun space for you to spend quality time with your little ones. We also added in some Spanish to our unit by reading Goodnight Moon in Spanish. So, Buenas noches, Luna. So again, this is just the same book but written in Spanish. And these simple, repetitive books are so great for language development. So if you are teaching your children a second language, this is a really great and easy way to do so. I also pulled out some coloring pages from the kids, my first big book, Bilingual Coloring in Spanish and English. So the kids colored the moon, la luna. And they also colored night, la noche. Next, we read moon 
Earth's Best Friend. This book is super fun and jam-packed with information. It covers how the moon revolves and rotates, the lunar phases, and information about gravity. It touches on other moons in our solar system, the size of Earth's moon, and the lunar and solar eclipse. The next couple of printables are free resources on my blog, and I'll be sure to link them below for you guys. And the first one we have here is this do a dot. So we again have M for moon. Do a dots are such a fun, hands on way to work on hand eye coordination and fine motor skills, as well as letter recognition, letter sounds, and pre writing skills. Now, this printable also includes some letter tracing to work on handwriting with those who are ready for it. So you'll just need some dot markers like shown here, as well as a pencil or any other kind of writing utensil. These type of dot marker activities are almost always a hit with my little ones. Even my kindergartner still very much enjoys doing these. Next, we have some block letter printables and there's several different ways you can use these. Now, these ones are specifically M for moon, so we have an uppercase M as well as a lowercase M. And what we did this time around was I gave the kids what we called moon rocks, and they were super excited about that. But I had them use their moon rocks to build the letter M. This is a really great pre-writing activity for preschoolers, and if your child is just learning their letters, it's also a wonderful hands-on way in order to remember what the letter M looks like. After the kids were done building their letters, they went ahead and colored them in. And I also printed some off on watercolor paper for them to watercolor. While the kids were coloring and watercoloring, I went ahead and read them this poem called The Moon. And this poem is from the book A Child's Garden of Verses, which is filled with such wonderful poetry. And you can't forget about sensory activities. This time around, we made moon sand. Now, this was a two-ingredient recipe, which I'll be sure to link below for you guys. But we also included some figures from our Safari LTD space tube in our sensory bin. And then I also provided some wooden scoops for the kids to work on those fine motor skills, as well as some other containers and measuring cups for transferring, filling, and pouring. And what's neat about this moon sand is that the texture is very forming and moldable. And playing with this can just be so therapeutic for little ones and even adults. And what I like best about sensory bins is seeing what my children have learned or even just their imagination and creativity coming out in their play. And I'm a mom because I have babies in my tummy. Then we're going to have soon, right? I'm going to have George! Babies. George! Are you? George. Oh, oh, ah, ah. Are we going to have George, baby? George, the is going to toy. Toy. Go to toy. Toy. Boy, watch out. It's going to be a toy. On another day, we read Little Bear Goes to the Moon, which you can find in the original Little Bear book. This is just a super sweet story about a little bear cub who's trying to fly up to the moon. This is also a great pick if you have an early reader on your hands. After we read Little Bear Goes to the Moon, the kids did a fun foil printed moon craft. Now, in order to make this craft, I traced some large circles on white sheets of paper, cut them out, and mixed up some gray paint on a plate. And then I balled up some aluminum foil and the kids used this to do their paint prints with. 
And I did end up giving the kids these circular sponge paintbrushes that I got from our local Dollar Tree. And using these just gave their moons more of a crater filled look on the surface. After the paint was dry, the kids went ahead and glued their moons onto the black sheets of paper. And I also gave them these metallic markers and chalk markers so they had the option between gold, silver, and white. And they used these to draw stars in their dark night skies. So here is my five-year-old completed craft. And then here's the one that my three-year-old did. We added in some science to our unit by doing this fizzy moon rock experiment, which of course I will link the original instructions in the description box for you guys. But this science experiment is a great way to introduce the concept of chemical reactions. And this specific experiment analyzes what happens when you mix a base like baking soda with an acid such as vinegar. And of course the kids just love seeing the reaction and watching the moon rocks fizz. I mean, I'm an adult, and I still very much enjoy a good baking soda and vinegar fizz. I feel like you can't do a moon unit without studying the moon phases. And to introduce the moon phases, we started by reading The Moon Seems to Change. This book not only covers the eight moon phases, but it also talks about why we see these changes. And it also gives you an experiment to try at home. After we read The Moon Seems to Change, we followed it up with a fun and yummy moon phases activity with, you guessed it, Oreos. I downloaded a free moon phases printable from mombright.com, which I'll link below for you guys, and picked up some gluten-free Oreos, which, did you know that they made gluten-free Oreos? I actually think they taste better than the original ones. Anyways, we used those in order to recreate the eight moon phases. And of course the kids just loved gobbling up some of the Oreos after we were done with the activity. Now, we did end up modifying and adding to this activity just a little bit. My kindergartner drew the earth inside of the moon phases. And then we also have this yellow minion ball that the kids have. And we use this to represent the sun and its light shining. But you can use anything you have laying around your house to help represent the sun, or you can even just cut out a circular piece of yellow paper. But adding these two elements really helped explain why the moon's appearance changes, and that each lunar phase is the shape of the sunlit part of the moon as seen from Earth. All right, you guys, so that about covers it for our moon unit study. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, it would mean so much to me if you would hit that thumbs up button below. And for more unit study videos and activity ideas in the future, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And you can also find me on Pinterest at Prairie Roots Homeschool.